Hey guys, welcome to Dr. Vlogs. This is going to be the first in a, in a series of videos on clinical medicine. So naturally, the place to start is with a patient history or an anamnesis. This video really is just revision for myself and I thought it might help some of you guys out there who are also uh, studying medicine. I'm a third year med student, so uh, I'm making these videos so that in the future I can look back and watch them. Uh, and give myself a, a knowledge boost. So taking a history of a patient is really important because a lot of illnesses or um, conditions can be diagnosed through a good anamnesis or a history of the patient. Um, obviously sometimes you can't but uh, majority of the times you can get a basic understanding of what is wrong. Anamnesis should really be a conversation rather than an interrogation because you want to build a rapport with the patient and make them feel comfortable so that they can trust you and tell you what is wrong honestly rather than hiding some uh, key pieces of information. Um, so to start you need to introduce yourself, say hello, my name is Dr Vlogs and then you ask them their name, age, then you're going to ask them why they've come to see you today so they need to, you need to ask them to present their complaint. So it needs to be an open-ended question, uh, it can't just be a closed question because that way you're not really going to get much out of the patient. Um, don't be intrusive, overly intrusive. You need to make them feel like they want to tell you rather than you're forcing them to tell you. So ask them a question such as why have you come to see me today or what brought you here today. And what this is really important, when you're writing these things down, you need to make sure that you're writing them down as the patient says it rather than how you're interpreting it in medical terminology because you might be interpreting it differently to what another doctor may interpret it as so therefore you might be diagnosing the patient wrong so after you've asked them uh, why they're here or uh, to present the complaint then you need to ask them the history of the complaint or the, the issue that they're presenting today so you need to ask them when it started and what was the first thing they noticed and how it's progressed since then and even if they've ever had it before because that's quite important and if they have had it before what did they do to resolve it? Did it go away on its own? And if they've tried the previous method of resolving it, worked. So a good acronym for this uh, is Socrates, for the history of the present complaint. First you need to ask them the site, where, where is the pain or where is the issue? Um, the onset, so was it gradual or is it sudden? Um, if it's intermittent or if it's constant, um, then you need to ask them the character of the pain, so is it sharp or and the radiation so does it spread around to different areas and locations or does it stay in the same place next you need to ask some associations so is it accompanied with any sweating or nausea and the timing of the pain and the duration so I kind of touched upon this before but when does the pain uh, happen is it at night during the day all the time during walking running or lying down sitting and uh, how long it lasts for and then things that exasperate or alleviate these factors so again we touched on on this just now um, and there's finally the severity so you might be able to ask them on a scale of 1 to 10 but you need to be wary of this because some somebody's 11 out of 10 pain might be another person's 5 because everyone has different pain thresholds you know usually that's a good indication of how badly it's affecting the patient uh, finally if you kind of got a rough idea, you might be able to ask some more direct questions to try and narrow down the list of possible diagnoses. Um, usually that, that kind of gives you a, a rough idea of what is going on. Then after you've asked them for the present complaint, then you move on to previous medical history. So have they ever been in hospital? Uh, have they ever had any previous illnesses or operations? And specifically ask them about... Uh, these few things which I'm going to list on the screen now, there's a, another acronym to remember it which is MIDGE threads. Uh, so the first one is myocardial infarction or a heart attack. Uh, secondly, you can ask them have they ever had jaundice, uh, tuberculosis, high blood pressure or low blood pressure, rheumatic fever, epilepsy, uh, have they ever had asthma or have they got asthma, are they taking anything for it, uh, diabetes, stroke have they ever had a stroke in the past and then after you've finished with the medical history you can move on to the drugs history are they on any tablets or medication at the moment uh, any injections any over-the-counter drugs things like uh, vitamins or herbal remedies 
uh, and ask them about allergies because it could be something that they've taken which is causing the complaint that they have today. So next, after the drug's history, um, you need to move on to the social history. And the social history is quite a, a delicate area because you have to ask it without being intrusive. The idea of the social history is to try and kind of get a uh, an insight into their lifestyle. So you need to ask them questions such as like who else lives with them at home, um, what they work as, their the marital status, and if they've got a wife or a husband, what the spouse does uh, as a job and the health. Um, with regards to the house, uh, do they have any stairs at home? Who kind of visits? Who, and is there anyone who's dependent on them at home? Or are they dependent on somebody else at home? What's their mobility like? Um, do they need a walking stick or, or a Zimmer frame? Or can they work, walk perfectly fine? Who does the cooking and the shopping? And if they've got any uh, hobbies or do they do any exercise or sport? These kind of questions will really give you an insight into the quality of their life or what may have caused the issues that they're presenting today. You could ask also tactfully about alcohol and tobacco intake, any other recreational drugs. Um, you need to ask them how much they drink or smoke and how long they've drank or smoked for. If they've stopped, how long ago they stopped and how long they used to smoke or drink for. And just a quick reminder is that people usually downplay what they smoke or drink if it's, if it's a big amount. So they might half it or something. So just be mindful of that and take it with a pinch of salt. Family history um, may need to be questioned uh, if there's like a history of heart disease or, you know, something that may run in the family. So it's good to ask about uh, the patient's siblings or the patient's uh, parents if they've got any um, similar kind of symptoms. Uh, and then you can move on finally to something called a systematic inquiry. It helps to discover anything that you may have missed off the off the list or that the patient hasn't told you because they might be they might have forgotten or might be withholding information from you. So it's quite a long list uh, really of things. So I'll just write it on the screen and you can kind of jot it down and pause it or whatever. But um, general questions which are usually quite significant in diagnosing TB or endocrine problems or even, even cancer. They're quite basic really, but they can tell you a lot, such as like weight loss or, you know, sleeping pattern or appetite, um, any traumas that they've recently had. You can move on to cardiorespiratory symptoms. Have they got uh, dyspnea, so which is breathlessness, or have they got orthopnea, which is breathlessness when you're lying down? Um, because that can tell you a lot also. And then you could ask them from that how many pillows they need to prop themselves up so that they can breathe. Or is it just when they're walking or running or it, does everything get them out of breath or just, you know, walking up the stairs? Uh, if the patient's coughing, then uh, is there any sputum? What color is it? Is there any blood coming out with the cough? Uh, palpitations. Can, can they feel the heart beating inside them or... Um, and can they tap out the rhythm? And is there edema uh, or swelling in the legs or you know, the ankles? Um, you can move on to gastrointestinal symptoms, uh, abdominal pain. Is it sharp or dull or where's it coming from? Is it when you eat food or just when you're having a poo? Other things you can ask about with regards to the GI symptoms are, um, are they having any problems swallowing or digesting food? Are they vomiting? Uh, and are they going to the, the toilet consistently? What's their bowel habits? And what colour is the stool? The poo? Is it brown or is it black? Red? Any blood? Things like that. Because these are all really uh, key symptoms of uh, various different illnesses and diseases. So actually, um, these are really important. Genito urinary symptoms, which you could ask them about. But obviously... For this, you need to have a rough idea of what it is. You can't just ask them everything. Uh, and then there's a few more neurological symptoms that they might be having. They might be having funny smells or or tasting funny, or they might be having they might be fainting or you know blacking out or something. Uh, and finally, musculoskeletal symptoms. So are they having a swelling of the joints or you know is there a systematic disease, rashes, mouth ulcers, etc. So you could ask them about uh, any thyroid symptoms, 
so hyper or hypothyroidism and that's it really there isn't much more to it once you've got uh, a good history of the patient usually you can diagnose pretty well what the patient has come in for and if not then you can send them on for further tests or examinations um, there will be more videos coming on examinations of various areas of the body and we'll be going through everything and thank you for watching this video i hope it helped you out yeah hopefully see you on the next video please subscribe share and like and yeah i'll see you